Good morning. My name is Susie Schultz. My pronouns are she, her, hers. I'm the director of outreach and communications here at Christ Lutheran Church. I'm here to share a few stories from my life. I guess I could call it stories from my journey of becoming an ally. According to the dictionary, an ally is a person who associates with or cooperates with another, a supporter. When I was growing up in the 60s and 70s, this term was not around. I knew there were same-sex attractions, but no one ever talked about it, and the term coming out was pretty non-existent. The summer after my junior year of high school, two of my close friends, Brian and Adele, started dating each other, but they broke up after a few months. Adele called me one night needing to talk. She shared with me that while they were dating, Brian had figured out he was gay. At the end of the conversation, we vowed not to tell anyone else because we didn't want him to be bullied. I will never forget that evening. I was totally shocked. I had a strong faith, and I didn't know how this news affected my faith and what I believed. Being gay or lesbian was a very taboo subject, and so I assumed that it was wrong. I remember crying hard and begging God to help me know what to say and what to do. I prayed and struggled with it for hours that night. I thought about God's love and all the things Jesus said in the Bible about love and how we should love one another as God loved us. And I came to a pretty big revelation that night. God made everyone unique and loves everyone just the way they are, and so should I, period. But feeling and knowing that truth didn't mean I understood everything or that I knew what to say or what to do going forward. And after a while, it came to me that what mattered most was for Brian to know that I loved him and would always be his friend. And I didn't want him to know how his being gay had rocked my world because I didn't think that would be helpful. So I decided the only way he would believe I was sincere about my friendship and love was if I didn't let him know that I knew his secret. So that's how it was. During that senior year, Brian and I continued our great friendship and had lots of fun experiences together. Just before we graduated, Brian told me he was gay. I said, yes, I know, and I've known since last summer. And he cried in amazement, but you've still been my friend this year. And I said, yes, I am always your friend. And we hugged and cried and talked a long time. He said he had waited to tell me because he was so afraid I would reject him. I was so glad I had worked through my angst on my own over time with God's help and had not involved him in the process. Brian's being gay was not about me. It was about Brian. It was about him discovering the truth about himself and being honest about who he was. And it was really hard in the 70s to do that. Once he had come out to me, he didn't have to cover up anymore. My knowing and still loving him made a world of difference to him. And guess what? He was still the same person I had always known, only more confident and happier when he was with me. I'm so grateful to God for this early experience because it helped prepare me for the people I would meet as I went to college and into the workplace. People who were struggling with their sexual identities. People who had been bullied for the way they looked or the way they talked. People contemplating suicide. People worried about coming out to their family or to their bosses or coworkers. I believe God placed me in their paths so I could learn. I learned to listen closely and my understanding grew and many more times I was able to offer my support and love. 
Skip ahead some years. I'm now in my 30s, in my second marriage, and with two stepsons who live with us part-time, Arthur and Duncan. My husband and I decided to find a church to attend together, and we settled on one and started singing in the choir. We loved singing, and we really liked the choir director, Tom. After about six months or so, I commented to Paul it would be fun to get to know Tom better. It seemed to me he was lonely and needed some friends. We needed friends, too. Paul agreed, and we decided to invite Tom out for appetizers at a restaurant after rehearsal one night. Amazingly, he said yes, and we had a great time. So that became a routine every week. It took a long time for him to open up about his personal life, but he did, little by little. And eventually, Tom told us he was gay. He had been out to his family for years, but was not out at work. He worried that he would lose his job if people knew the truth. As our friendship grew, we talked about what it would mean to him to be able to be himself and not have to live two separate lives. Eventually, he gained the confidence to change jobs and moved into a church music position where he could be out. What a change that made in his life. And what a change his friendship brought to our lives. As we hung out together, sang together, partied together, played tennis together, met each other's family and friends, vacationed together, Paul and I started to see the world in many new ways from the gay point of view. Tom brought us into his world, a world that many of us straight folks don't see in our day-to-day -day lives. We learned how gay couples feel being in straight venues when they're stared at and sometimes ridiculed if they give any indication that they're actually together. We learned that not having a state-recognized marriage meant you might not be allowed to be with your spouse as their next of kin when they're in the hospital. We experienced being the only straight people in a gay venue many, many times. We met drag queens and we saw drag shows. We heard stories of parents rejecting sons, of families divided. We also got over the first shock of seeing same-sex couples holding hands and, oh my gosh, giving each other a kiss. Let's face it, you don't really see very many same-sex couples kissing on TV or in public very often, so it takes a little getting used to. But once it does, it's normal. Simply stated, being Tom's friend has opened our eyes and enriched our lives so much. I firmly believe God led us on this journey for a reason, because when I turned 50, our oldest son, Arthur, told us he was gay. Even though we were surprised, we immediately gave him big hugs and I love yous and congratulations, and we had a family celebration. We were so very glad he had found himself and had the confidence to share his story with us. He said he had figured out his identity during his college years. It was amazing to me to realize that even though Arthur knew we would be supportive, it was still hard for him to decide to come out to us. I remember saying to him privately that I figured if anyone would be coming out in the family, it would be Duncan. Well. Four years later, Duncan did come out, and we had another celebration. He said he had always known he was gay. Why didn't you tell us sooner, I asked. Surely you knew how much we love you and that we would be supportive. I will never forget his reply. It's not about you. It's about me and the timing that I felt comfortable with. Arthur married his partner, Keith, on the first day that marriage was legal in Minnesota, and we are so proud of our three gay sons and our deep friendship together. One of the many things we do as a family is to attend the Twin Cities Pride Festival every year. It always brings me a ton of joy to walk around the park, 
to see the exuberance of those newly out, to see couples who can feel free to hold hands in public without worry, to be with our boys and to show the world how proud we are of them. One year, when we were trying to figure out logistics of getting downtown due to road construction, I casually mentioned that maybe Paul and I just wouldn't go this year. And Arthur said, you don't understand, you have to be there. It's super important. Pride is about you, not about us. It shows our friends and the rest of the community that you support and love us. Among the people we know, you're the only set of parents who shows up. We're so proud of you and we want you to be there. So of course we went. That year, as we hung out with our guys at a gay bar and restaurant, I saw what he meant. Throughout the afternoon and into the evening, we were approached by so many young men who wanted to talk with us, asking if they could shake our hands or give us a hug. One of them said, thank you for being here. I'm not welcome at my parents' home anymore. They've disowned me for being gay. It's so cool to see a family being all together at Pride. You are parents for all of us here today. It broke my heart. And I hugged him, and I told him that I was sure his parents loved him, and that someday they would find a way to tell him so. And he had tears in his eyes, and so did I. Guess what? God was in that place. I'm so thankful to God for showing me early in my life that being an ally is all about love, that everyone is a beloved child of God. I'm so thankful that Paul and I have been given courage to share hugs and words of love and support even with people we don't know. I've shared these stories from my journey with you in the hopes that it will help you along your way. Here's three things that I learned over the years. Becoming an ally is a journey. Whatever you feel, it's okay. It's okay if you don't know what you think and you don't know how to act or what to say. Many of us don't at first. Just show up. Showing up is a statement. It says, I'm an ally. Eventually, the words will come. Second, listening is so important. Listen to their story and be sure they know you love them. And third, have the courage to share stories about your LGBTQ plus loved ones and about your life experiences with them whenever you get a chance. The more positive stories people hear, the more those stories sink into their souls and change them. And that's how we change the world. I would like to close with this. It's by Meta Herrick Carlson, and it's titled, For When Someone Comes Out to You. I must remember this is not sudden or chosen, but a quiet and vulnerable truth finally entrusted to me. My first instinct is to seek information, to give permission, to clarify what I want or need, but I must refrain. I must keep this moment safe and sacred for the one who has dared to speak what is real. I cannot miss showing my person how fiercely and completely they are loved. I cannot miss marking a new beginning because it will happen with or without me. I cannot miss the holy part. So I listen longer, offering my whole presence with grace that adores them fully and always, that holds their whole being with good care they deserve. Amen, and blessings to you on your journeys.